Hi everyone, thanks for coming. I'm Sean Hewitt, I'm president of SPMC. If you're not already a member, I'd strongly encourage you to uh, join our group. This banner over here talks a little bit more about us. Uh, feel free to stop by at our, our club table uh, later in the show. So the, the, the Board of uh, Governors at, at SPMC is a very project-oriented group, and every year we try to find things to, to improve the organization and the hobby. And this is a project that just kind of fell into our lap in the last year. Uh, late last year, we'd come to learn that a, a man by the name of Andrew Pollock had spent the last two years compiling uh, bank officer and bank uh, information from the controller reports. Just kind of a project on his own that he started. No one asked him to do it. He just started. He uh, entered in about a half million records in an Excel spreadsheet over like a three-year period, which is which is insane. But but he did it, and he gave this to the community. So we have this endowment of data. And of course, Peter latched onto it when he found out it, about it and uh, got Mark involved. And uh, Peter had a lot of other data that um, that Mark was able to incorporate. They put it together and they, they built something um, that they call the, uh, the Banknote History Project. And it's two parts. It's a, it's a database that's searchable. It's on the SPMC website. It's free for members to get onto. And there's also a wiki, which is uh, there's a, a place where uh, people can uh, post and uh, share and read information about uh, bank hi banker histories and banks. And so uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. Mark's going to show you all about how that works. So, Mark Drinkson. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sean. All right. First, I'll give you an outline of what we'll be going over here today. A brief overview of the project and its two online components, the Bank and Bankers Database. And the second component is the Banknote History Wiki. And then uh, once we get that overview, we'll, I'll give you an example of how to use the project to research a banknotes history. Then I want to dive a little bit deeper into three data topics related to the database. First is bank officer summaries, OCC officer name misreads, and then data review status. And then I'll give a couple more examples searching with the database so you can get a better idea how that works. Then we'll get into an overview of the Banknote History Wiki. Then I'll go over a couple ways you can help out with the project. And then we'll answer any questions you might have. Now, I guess at this point, to keep us moving along, why don't we hold all the questions till the end? That'll help because we've got a lot of, lot of information to go through here, and we'll have to go through it pretty quickly. And so we won't be able to spend as much time on some of these topics as I would like to. But the main thing for today is to give you a good overview of the whole project and show you all the information that's available there. Um, <clears throat> well, my software company, we call this um, opening up the fire hose, um, turning on the fire hose, <coughs> when we have to be showing a whole lot of information to our users in one big blast. So don't worry if you're not catching all, every little detail today. The main thing is you're just getting the overall picture of what's going on. And once you, you'll, it'll make more sense once you start using the project. So. So let's go ahead and uh, get going here and turn on the fire hose. All right, the purpose of the Banknote History Project is to provide an online framework to help gather, organize, and present historical data related to U.S. banknotes issued during the National Banknote Era and the Absolute Banknote Era. And the project's focused on two of the primary historical aspects of these hometown banknotes, the banks that issued the notes and the bankers who signed them. Now this. At the bottom, these images here, this is kind of a logo for the, for the project, kind of illustrates what we're trying to do with this. First, we got the note there in the middle. We got a nice $5 brown back on First National of Pipestone, Minnesota, which happens to be a hometown bank for me. Great pen sigs there, William Frost and W.C. Briggs. You can see from the overlap in their 10 years there that this note would have been issued somewhere between 1903 and 1908. And to the left here, we've got a picture of the building that the First National occupied between 1898 and 1915. So that was contemporary when, with when the, uh, when the Brownback was issued. And then we've got a, on the right, we've got a picture of uh, W.C. Briggs, who was president that signed this. So you can see it's kind of a, kind of a, in, includes all what we've got going with the project here. All right, the project consists of two online components. The first is the Bank and Bankers database, covering the full period through the obsolete and the uh, National bank note errors. It includes key bank balances and all the presidents and cashiers from the annual OCC reports for all the national banks chartered between 1863 and 1935. 
And it's not just a list of the OCC bank officer entries. It also ties together bank officer name abbreviations and misspellings, and then ties together bank officers from different banks to one banker. I'll show you down the road how that works. It's, kind of, it's easier when you see the data rather than just talking about it. But I, so now and it also includes many other possible banknote signers, such as VPs and assistant cashiers, uh, where we get the data from the bankers' directories and, and other sources like that. Um, similar information is available for many of the obsolete banks, um, with more being added over time. Now, one general comment here, you'll see I'm focusing a lot more on the national banks in this presentation. And the main reason for that is we've got all the data in there for the national banks, thanks to, thanks to Andrew Pollack, for one, like Andrew was saying. But we've got all that information in there. As we're, with the obsoletes, we don't have full information like that. We don't have those yearly annual, those annual OCC reports from every year we can get all that data. So it's, it's much more uh, sporadic as far as what obsolete banks and bankers we've got in there right now. So for this purpose of this presentation and what we're doing, I'll focus on the national banks. And then down the road, we'll be getting more, more into the obsolete data. All right, and a website provides an easy to use database search interface into the database. So, and then since SBMC is sponsoring this membership, uh, or sponsoring it, a membership login is required to search the database. All right, and then the second component is the uh, Banknote History Wiki, once again covering the full obsolete uh, National Bank era. And uh, that's a public crowdsourced website. And it's very similar to Wikipedia. And in fact, it's based on the same software that runs Wikipedia. Contents primarily bank histories and banker bios, which can be linked into the bank officer's database, the obsolete, you know, SPMC's obsolete database project, as well as other online resources. It also includes um, some other articles on relevant banknote history but that don't really fit into the specific bank histories or bank, banker bios. And then we also got what we call featured bank notes. And that, uh, first of all, it, it uh, gets to show some cool notes in there. But also we've got links to the bank's history and banker bios then for the note signers. And that really illustrates the type of information we're trying to include in the wiki. State home pages can be set up that focus just on a particular state's bankers and banking history, and then highlights new wiki content for that state and famous bankers and help for research, helpful research, research, research resources. Now with those two brief overviews, now let's kind of look at an example of how to use the project to research a banknote's history. Here we've got a neat serial number one from First National Bank of Starbuck, Minnesota. And uh, we're going to be doing some research on this. There's kind of three questions that the project can help us answer. First is who signed the banknote? What can we learn about the bankers who signed it? What can we learn about the bank that issued it? So we're answering those three questions, let's go and see what we can find out. Now what I'll do here, I'll start right from the, right from the beginning here so you can see exactly how to get into these components with the, with the project here in case you haven't done any of that yet. Just want to show, make sure you can get in there. Um, Here's SPMC's home, home page. It's so basically just, just uh, browsing to spmc.org. That'll get you to their home page. And you can see down here in the, in the bottom, we've got a panel here for the Banknote History Project. If you just click anywhere on that panel, that'll bring up the Banknote History Project home page. It's got kind of an overview on the, on the project and the components there. And, and a couple of uh, buttons here to get you into the two components. Now, like I said, in order to search the database, you've got to be logged into the SPMC as, one, as a member there. So you can just log in using their login in the upper right-hand corner. And then once you're logged in, just click on the uh, Search the Bank and Makers database. Then it'll take a second or two to log you into the, to the database server. And it'll come up with a screen here for the bank officer search, which is, that's kind of the home page for, uh, for the database there. Now, in this case, we're just going to be we just want to get the information for this bank. So the easiest way to do that is just to uh, put the charter number into the uh, charter search field there. Click on the search button, and that'll bring up the bank officers that are on file in the database for this, for this charter number, for this bank. And uh, now before we, 
go further any further on this research here, I kind of want to go through the data that's included in the search results here so you got a better idea what's showing there and then we'll get back to reviewing this actual actual note. Now and before we get into that, it's important to clarify how some common terms are used in the context of this bank and banker database. These, these are common terms but we need to see exactly how they're used here to, to keep things clear here. First, bank is the banking institution, either an obsolete bank, national bank, or a state or private bank that's related to a national bank or banker. The banker refers to the actual person. A bank officer refers to a banker serving as an officer in a particular bank over a period of years. So that means a banker could be a bank officer for multiple banks. So that's kind of the main primary distinction we need to get out of this slide, the difference between banker and bank officer there. And then officer detail refers to all the annual OCC entries plus the banker's directory and magazine entries, bank letters, all the other stuff that are consolidated to generate the bank officer summaries for a bank. And here we've got a, a sample of an officer summary here, H. Anders Anderson, he was president in 1921 to 35 and, and cashiered in 1906 to 1920. I don't know, was Mark Anderson in here? He, he'd recognize this is, this is his grandfather with the uh, with the First National Bank of Grantsburg, Wisconsin. So, all right, so that gives you an idea on that terminology. Now getting back to the search results here, if we look at the fields off to the left here, this is the bank officer information. And first we see like okay, there's, a, there's a bank officer name there, B.C. Bergeson, and you can see that's the link. If you click on that link, that would bring up the banker information for that bank officer. I'll show you, we'll get into that in a minute. We'll show you some examples of that. Then below that is the bank officer summary that we just talked about for that bank officer. The next column there, signer, that indicates whether this bank officer was a banknote signer or not. And the way we define banknote signer is all presidents and cashiers for all of the banks that actually issued notes, plus the VPs and assistant cashiers that are known to have signed banknotes, where we've got a signature scan on file, you know, verifying that they really signed notes. And the um, reason we got that in there, there's a filter option there. If you want to check and only see these banknote signers, a lot of times the bankers we're more interested in are the ones that actually signed the banknotes. Where in the database, there might be a lot of ad additional vice presidents and assistant cashiers that are potential banknote signers. We want them in there in case you're looking at a banknote and trying to figure out who signed and it's not one of the usual suspects. We want to list these other VPs and assistant cashiers that might be potential signers there so you can figure out who you're, who you're looking for. But if you, sometimes you'll do a search and you get an awful lot of bank officers listed. And if you just want to restrict that back to the more important ones, the banknote signers, you can just check that checkbox when you're doing the search. So that's, that's what banknote signers are. Now below that you can see we've got a signature link there. If there is a signature scan on file for this bank officer, that link will show there. And if you click on it, it'll come up with a signature scan. I'll show you in a, in a minute what, what that is. And you can use that for comparing to uh, to signatures on the notes. Next two columns there are birth and death year if they're available. Mm -hmm. That'll show there. And then if this bank officer has a, a bio, a banker bio in the wiki or somewhere on the internet, then that link will show there. And if you click on that, that'll bring up the wiki page on that, for that banker bio. So you can see there's a lot of information that's, that's available here. Now as far as the bank information, the Columns off to the right there, this is the bank information. You can see we've got the city, county, and state. And then we've got the uh, bank code column there. And if it's, a if it's a national bank, it'll be the charter number. If it's an obsolete bank, it'll be the Haxby code. Then we've got the bank titles column. That'll list, that'll list the, the titles for the bank. And if there's multiple titles for a bank, it'll list all those bank titles there and we'll separate them with a slash. Then we've got the officer detail link there that'll bring up a list of all those OCC entries and everything else. We'll show you an example of that. And the last two fields there are when the, the year the bank opened and closed. And since in this database and in this project, we're mainly interested in the history up through 19, 1935 through the end of the National Bank Note era, if the bank survived beyond that, you'll, see, you'll just see a 1936 plus there indicating you know, that the bank survived beyond 1935. Okay, so that gives you a much better idea of all the information that's available in the search results. So let's get back to our, hit the right button there, there we go. Get back to just researching this 
banknote here. So to answer our first question, who signed the banknote? We can look at the SIGs here, and fortunately these guys had pretty good handwriting, so we can pretty much figure out who it is. If we look at the cashier, we can say, okay, looks like Hughes. If we look down on our list of bank officers, officers, we see, sure enough, George W. Hughes was cashier from 1910 to 1914, so we've identified who our cashier there. Now one thing I'll point out, and I'll explain why later, but in the bank officer summary here, you can see it has him as cashier from 1910 to 1914, but after further research on Hughes, I knew he was the founding cashier for this bank, and they opened up in December of 1909, and so I knew he was, you know, 1909 to 1915 when he bought out the president and became president himself, so we know the actual years in service were 1909 to 1915, where the database only shows 1910 and 1914, and I'll show you. It's important to understand how that can happen. In a couple minutes, I'll explain that later, but just wanted to point it out here because I'll, I'll refer back to this example. Okay, now as far as the president signer, you can look at, let's pretend he's one of these unreadable signatures, just for, just for drill here. In this case, we kind of look through the list here, and this, we, if we're guessing, we say, like in this case, oh, maybe it's Harold Thorson. Um, now if we look, we see he has a signature scan on file. <coughs> So what we can do, we can click on that signature scan, and that will bring up the signature scan there. And that way you can compare that signature, and you can say, oh, sure enough, that is, that is Harold Thorson there. So now, now we know who the two bank officers that have signed this note. So now that, we, now that we've identified them, what more can we learn about those bankers? So now if we go back to our search results here, if you remember the, the link there on the bank officer's name, if we click on that, this will bring up the banker information page on that bank. And this, let's see, we've got full, the fuller name there, we've got birth and death info, spouse, other comments if they're available. Here we've got the officer name variations that show in the OCC reports or other data sources. It's basically just dis different abbreviations of his first name there. And in this case, Hughes was also a banker in several other banks, so it'll list all the other banks that he was involved with that are in the database. So that gives you an idea of what information is there for that banker. Now another source of information there is if that banker has a banker bio set up over in the wiki, then we, the link will show there. We can click on that. This will bring up, this will go over to the wiki and pull up the actual banker bio page for George Hughes out of the wiki. Um, you can see here some of the contents, we are just showing part of the page here, but you can see some other information that's included here. This is a much more detailed biographical information, obviously, in the, in the wiki. All right, so that kind of shows how you can see more, you can find more information on the bankers. Now what can we learn about the bank that issued the note? So in that case, we can look over here, remember we had that link on the, on the bank title. If we click on that, here's the bank information page for that bank, and this has a lot of information, so I had to kind of break it into three, three scans here in order to fit it on one slide. But first, we've got the bank titles up here, the official bank titles, and if there's multiple titles, we'll also have the change date there. And these are the full official titles that, per, that Peter's pulled together over the last several years, so that's, that's the official titles that you'll find for this bank. Now, in, if this bank has a bank history page set up over in the wiki, then a link will show here and you'll be able to link over to that. We'll, show, we'll see that in a minute. Here's the bank history timeline. This has kind of got the, the key dates for this bank, as well as other information, such as uh, if they absorbed other banks, consolidated with other banks, if they uh, succeeded a certain bank or were succeeded by a bank, or converted from a bank like we, like we see here. So it's basically information like that. Most of that came from the Van Belkin Brown book in the uh, summary information he had there, and then Peter's also added additional information, and he's also, when he was down in the archives over the years, he's got notations that showed up in the organization report that often, often had some very useful information, such as we see here with the conversion of which, which bank that was converted to, to bring up the First National Bank of, of a Starbuck here. So that's that information. Now the other, let's go over to the third slide here. There's also bank balances, and this, these are two of the key balances that Andrew Pollack transcribed from all the OCC reports for all the banks, the, the total resources and the circulation balance. 
So we got those out of the OCC reports for all the banks for all the years. So this, this, this uh, table here shows those balances for every year. This shows the OCC report <coughs> for every year that, that the bank was in business. And then we also got summary information on those balance years. We got low and bal, low and high bal, along with the years and the, and the amounts. For the circulation summary, we've got low, high, bell, and then also the, the last total out. Here we've got actual number of notes issued, total, large, and small, along with the dollar amount issued, total, large, and small. So you can see there's a lot of good, a lot of good information here on the, on the banks, too. And this, this information's in there for every single national bank, you know, all 14,000 of them. So that's in the database there. So it's great information. So Now, in this case, um, We've also, there's a bank history page set up in the wiki, so it shows a link here. If we click on that, and that will, uh, this, it goes over to the wiki, pulls up that, that bank history page with a lot more detailed information and images and everything on that bank. Once again here, it shows the sections of data that are available on that page. So, so that gives you a good idea on what a bank history looks like and how to link into it from the database. All right, now one other piece of information on the, uh, on the bank is the officer detail. If we get into this, okay, now here we can see, look at the data source column there. Here we've got an entry from one of the OCC entries. And this is the one from 1910. You can see it shows the president and cashier there. Here's a banker's directory entry for 1913 banker's directory showing president cashier and also VP and assistant cashier information. And you can see if we have a lot of sources besides the OCC reports here, now this can get to be a long list. We got a lot of banker directories or, or other sort of data sources here. And a lot of times you're just inter inter interested in seeing the main OCC entries for the presidents and cashiers. So up in the left-hand corner, there's a filter there. If you click on OCC only, see we're, right now we're showing all, that's why that one's highlighted. If you click on the OCC only, It'll filter it back so it just shows the OCC records. So you just got one, one entry per year here with the primary information, the president and cashier. So that's a good way to filter that list down if you've got a lot of extraneous information you're not in, interested in right at that point. Now, two columns on here to be aware of once you, when you're doing research is re researching. This is important columns here. The first one, REV, stands for reviewed, and that indicates whether this entry has been reviewed or not. And the whole data review process I'll go through in a minute. But the main thing to note here, if, that, if these entries have been reviewed, there will be a Y in that column. VFY stands for verified. And that means, if there's a Y in there, that means we've double checked the spellings of these bank officers back in whatever source is indicated. So in this case, that's a Y there. It means we've actually double checked back in the OCC reports that th these are the proper spellings. And see, so that can be, I'll show you a good example here, all that, when that's important. We see down here we've got G.I. G. Engebretson, president in 1922 and in 1924. 1923, we've got a G.I. Engelutsen, which, you know, who's this guy? But you can see that's obviously, it's a misspelling there. But the first thing, like if I was looking at this, I'd see, okay, Engelutsen, well, maybe it was a transcri transcription error out of the OCC report. But what we can do, we can look over to that review count and say, no, that's a Y, so this has been double checked. So we know Engelutsen is what's out in the OCC report. Now, how that can happen is, is something I'll show you in a minute here. We'll, we'll just assume this is a misread here and a misspelling. And we, a lot of times we'll put a comment over there to indicate that. But as far as how this can happen is an interesting thing I'll go over in a minute here. But at least this was a good, good illustration of what that verified column can be used for. Now, I also want to go over one other thing on the sources here. Um, here we've got bank officer detail for Deadwood National in, in Deadwood. And for the sources here, here we've got one of our OCC records. Here we've got a banker's directory entry. Here we've got a bank letter 1887 entry showing George C. Hickok, Hickok as president. And if we, we can see that's a link, so if we click on that, That'll bring up a scan of that bank letter. And there's some great information a lot of times on these bank letters. Like here in, in this case, a lot of times the letterhead will have the other, will have, will have officers across the top there. Like here we've got George Hickok, 
president, Ben Bear, VP, and then J.L. Maxwell Jr. as a cashier. So a lot of times that'll help if you're trying to figure out a proper spelling on a name. You know, if there happens to be a bank letter in there, you know, you hope they got the spelling right on their bank letterhead, but so it's a good choice for that. And then also, you might find some first names there where in the OCC they might just have those, those initials. So it's a good source of trying to figure out those, those fuller names too. So in addition to that, we've got the date here, March 29, 1887. And then we can see this is signed by George C. Hickok as president. You can see there's a little PT squiggle there. A lot of times in these, these are transactional documents that they were mailing back and forth. So they were official documents and we, they'll put a little, like the president if he signed it, it'll put a little PT or the, if the cashier signed it, it'll have a little C-A-S-H type of thing. So basically what this tells us right now is George C. Hickok was president of Deadwood National on March 29th, 1887. So it's, it's a good source of, you know, great source of verifying uh, when, when exactly he was president. Um, oh, by the way, George C. Hickok isn't related to Wild Bill as far as I did some research and couldn't, he appeared, nothing I could find got him related, which would have been cool in Deadwood there, but. Okay, so you can see this is useful information um, for nationals. Now for obsolete banks, it's even more information, or more <laughs> important. Um, here we got Mechanics Bank, New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, this bank opened in about 1825 and lasted into the 1900s. But finding this bank officer detail is a whole lot harder for the obsolete banks. I found pretty good sources back to like 1948 in Bankers Magazine and that sort of thing for full listings of, of all the obsolete banks with their bankers. But that's about as far back as I can get reliable sources on everything. Um, to get information before that, you've got to find like maybe city directories or bank histories, you know, it's kind of hit and miss what you can find there. So I had this entry in the, uh, in the bank officer detail for this bank, and then one, one day on eBay, a bank letter showed up from that bank. So I got that, and uh, here's a scan of that bank. Same thing here, we can see Mechanics Bank, dated March 17, 1837. And this is signed by J.W. Mitch as cashier. You can see his cashier squiggle down there. So this is verifying that J.W was actually cashier, and he was cashier here, but he was also cashier back in 1937. So Phil, you can see it fills in more of that, that bank officer detail as far as when, when the, the officers for this bank. So you can see how the, these, sort of thing, these sort of sources can be more important for obsoletes. So I just want to point out, point out that source so you had to see how that worked. Um, all right, now I want to dive a little deeper into three, three of these data topics related to the database. And uh, first is bank officer summary, then the OCC officer name misreads, and then data review status. First of all, okay, the bank officer summary, as we pointed out, lists the officers held and years served by a bank officer for a bank. And the important thing, these summaries are generated on the fly from those officer detail entries. And it bases that on the first and last year entries for each office served. Therefore, these officer summaries are always going to be consistent with the officer detail. That's, that's a big thing in a database. So if we're going and adding more detail in there and we do a search, it's immediately going to be adjusting those bank officer summaries to take that detail into effect. So that's, that's a big thing there. Now a couple things you need to be aware of on those bank officer summary because of the way it, it does these calculations. Since the OCC reports were only issued once per year, that first and last year of the bank officer summary can be off by a year. So I refer back to George Hughes, where we saw that, that it was off, you know, rather than 1910 and 1914, it was actually 1910 and 1915. And the reason for that is these OCC reports only came out once a year. And in the case of, of First National Starbuck, where the bank opened in December of 1909, but the OCC report for that year was, was either September or October, there isn't an OCC entry in 1909 for that bank, and that's why the, the, uh, the officer summary shows 1910 as the first year for his, for his term there. And then the same thing on the other end. So you can, you can see, based on these reports that were only issued one per year, depending on the timing, that first and last year for the bank officer summary might be, might be off by a year. Also, you've got the situation if an officer served two separate terms, for instance, cashier 1910 to 15 and 18 to 25, since the officer summary is basing it on the first and last year entries, 
it'll say 1910 and 1925, which, is, which would be misleading. But the key thing is, if you've got any questions, you can always go to the bank officer detail to, to clarify if necessary. Also, an important thing on anytime you're looking at the bank officer summaries for BP and assistant cashier, those are usually going to be incomplete because those will be based on the, the banker's directories entries and, and that sort of thing. And we'll usually just have a few sporadic ones in there. You won't have a, an entry for every year like you do with the OCC reports. So anytime you see a BP and assistant cashier, as far as their officer summary and when they serve, just aware that, where that's usually going to be incomplete. The main reason we've got them in there is just having them in there as a possible date bank note signers, um, even, if the, if the, even if the summaries are incomplete. So a couple caveats there just to be aware of when you're looking at those officer summaries. All right, here's, here's a fun one. Um, these officer name misreads. Here's an example, bank officer detail from First National Bank of Pipestone. And if we look at 1889, we've got Charles Milius as president. If we look at 1890, it's got Chaz Millens. 91, Chaz Millens. 1892 is Charles Millens. So, you know, is it Charles Millius or Charles Millens? Which, which is correct here? Of course, if we, if we got questions on these spellings here, first thing we can do is look at that verified column. We see, yes, they have been verified, so we know these are the spellings in the OCC reports. So what's, what's going on here? Why, you know, why are we seeing these different spellings? Um, I've been wondering about this for years, when I, especially seeing it in a, first, you know, in, in a hometown bank like this. And the first time I looked in there, and I said, what? I can't even get the spelling right on this guy. What's, what's going on? Um, after digging around on it for a few years, you're trying to figure out what's going on, my theory is these OCC entries are due to misreads of bankers' signatures. And you can see if you look at Milius versus Millens, it'd be very easy, if they're reading from a the banker's signature, it'd be very easy to you know, mix up whether it's Milius or Millens. So that's my theory on, on why you're getting these, these uh, misspellings in the OCC boards. And by the way, there is, there is a lot of these misspellings in there like this, so you'll, you'll see them quite often. So. Now, as far as how this can happen, um, there's a neat source that um, National City Bank in New York in 1904, and then with a revised edition in 1910, issued a guide called National Banks of the U.S., their organization management supervision. And what they did, they issued this guide for prospective organizers of national banks, and they would give them this guide to help them get started and that sort of thing. And obviously, they were doing this, hoping that this bank would, you know, that they'd, they'd make National City Bank their sponsorship bank in New York. So that's why they were doing this. But it's an it's interesting guide to look through to try to see how these, how these national banks were organized and how they, how they worked. Um, plus in the back they had an appendix that list, listed all these official forms. And I kind of looked through those trying to find where, where the bank officer names would be. And the only one I could find here that had both, you know, the, the, the cashier and the president was this official signatures form. And you could understand why the OCC would want, they would need to know who the authorized signers were going to be for the banknotes. So that was the purpose of this form. You'd have to send in signatures of the, of the president, VP, and cashier so they would know who the authorized signers were on that banknote. So that, that was the purpose of the signature. So my theory here is for the annual OCC reports, when they were compiling the information for this, for the bank balances that show in the OCC reports, they'd use the last statement of condition called for by the controller. That, that makes sense there. But even with that, only the cashier would be signing that. The president doesn't sign anything, so it, it's, not, it's not the source for both of those, both of those officers. And so those officer names in the OCC reports came from this official, from this official signatures report here, this official form here. So that's, and if, if they misread the signatures, you can see here there would only be signatures. There's nowhere here where they're printing or typing the name. So it would make sense if they're having to read from these signatures here, if they're, if they're misreading the signatures, that would, that would, that, that's why those name errors would be showing up in the OCC reports. And another problem this solves is a lot of times you'll see if, if this form was late in submitted when they had a change of officers, they're supposed to sign, you know, send in an updated copy of this form with the, with the new officer signatures. If they were late submitting that form, 
then that could cause the officers listed in the OCC report after they'd retired or resigned or died. I found instances in there where the, where the president like died in, in February, but he's still listed in September as the official president for that bank. And this would explain how that could happen if they were just late in getting this official signature form back in when they actually put together the OCC report, they were getting old information from this. Which, so that explains how a couple of the data errors that show up in the OCC reports can, can happen. All right, now this data review status. Um, this whole topic here with data review, um, <clears throat> when we first started the project here, I was hoping by the time we got the project released and everything, I'd have, be able to have all the banks reviewed and everything, and then we wouldn't have to go through this. But in this case, we're about half, we're through about 23 of the states here as far as reviewing. So I'm, I'm having to bring up what the differences are if you're looking at a state that's been reviewed versus not. So that's the purpose of this. Um, let's go through and I'll show you what's going on. The data is undergoing the re review process to identify and fix data errors. Obviously won't find all of them, but it'll make a good first pass. And then it reviews the officer detail for each bank in a state to group the various name abbreviations and misspellings, these OC mysteries, into one bank officer for that bank. Um, in a, in a minute here, I'll illustrate this. I'll show you the data, and then it's a whole lot easier to see what's going on rather than talking it through. But and then after all the banks have been reviewed, the list of bank officer names for the state will be reviewed, and then you'll, it'll group multiple bank officers into one banker. So uh, review, it's an ongoing process. will take a while to complete. It can take as little a minute as a minute or two per bank or up to several minutes if there's lots of errors and discrepancies. 23 states have been fully reviewed so far. We've got a page on the wiki for data review status, so if you want to see which states have been reviewed and which haven't, you can, uh, you can look at that. And as far as priority for the next states to be reviewed based on user feedback, um, if you're going to be doing a lot of research on a certain state or for certain states that you're interested in are not yet reviewed, let me know and then we'll prioritize getting those states done as far as reviewed so it's easier for you to be searching through the stuff. Now, important note here, if the state hasn't been reviewed yet, all of the raw OCC bank officer data, it's still there and available for searching, but these bank officer names and spellings won't be grouped together yet, and the uh, banker records won't have been created that tie together the bankers for multiple banks. So just keep that in mind when you're searching. You get a better idea if we show you an actual example. Here's a portion of a bank's search results before it was reviewed. Here's our old friend, Charles Milius. And we can see here, before it's reviewed, he's listed here five times, once for each different spelling of his name. And then the other thing is the bank officer summaries are fragmented. Since, since this is split up into five different spellings, this bank officer summary here is only like for 1899, but we also know he was president in 93 and, and, and 90, that sort of thing. But you can see how the, the bank officer's summaries are fragmented because all of the different spellings are, are listed individually. So now that same bank, officers, bank, same bank search results after review, now we can see Charles Milius, he's only listed once there because all of these spellings have been grouped together under that one, under that one spelling, and plus the, uh, the bank officer summary is consolidated now, so it's the full. So now you can see if, the, if, you're, if, the, if a bank you're looking at is in an unreviewed state, it's going to be listed potentially multiple times. So the data's all there. It's just a little more confusing to try to figure out when they were actual actually an officer there, whereas after it's reviewed, you can see that it's been consolidated like that, so. Also on the, yeah, I can see, okay, you can see the bank officer somewhere there. Also, if you look at the bank information page, now we can see those officer name variations, those five variations have been grouped together under this one banker, and you can see the misspellings there. You can see that they're marked as misspelling and everything, so. And then also, since this banker was also served in other banks, after it's been reviewed, it'll list all of those banks that they've served in there. So you can see how it's a lot clearer, a lot clearer once it's been reviewed. It really helps you with the searching there. Okay, now let's go through a couple more examples of searching so you can get a better idea how these search criteria work. Um, first of all, this is a bank officer search, and that's the only search we've got, search page we've got defined 
in this search web app right now. Down the road, we'll probably put a bank search in there too that would return just a list of banks. But for now, this is, this, this is the search page we have in there and that'll return a list of all the bank officers based on the criteria that you've, that you've entered here for searching. As you can see, there's multiple search criteria available. And it's important to understand it does what, they're, what are called and searches here. So for example, if you've got a value in state and a value in city, it's gonna search for all the bank officers that are in that state and that city. Um, that's key to understand if you're, if you're going doing through and do, doing a bunch of searches, and say you were searching in South Dakota, so you had SD up in the states there, and then you decided you wanna just search for Charter 9596, which is, our, which is the first national of Starbucks, Minnesota. So you'd put the charter in up here. If you, if you did a search at that point with the charter here in the state of SD, it's gonna come back with empty results because you're asking to return all the bank officers in Charter 9596, which is a Minnesota bank, and in South Dakota. So you can see, you can see why that's gonna be an empty result. So if, you, if you're doing some searching and it comes back empty when you're not expecting it to, check to see if you've got some competing search criteria up here. Then also, you can see how I got the fire hose open here. I'm just, you can, like I said, don't have to catch everything here. But, um, so you can also have multiple values separated by commas here, and I'll show an example in, in one of these search examples here. Okay, here's our first one. We're gonna be searching for bank officers in the state of Minnesota. I'm using Minnesota, that's, that's a fully reviewed state. We've done a lot, of me and Sean, we've done a lot of work with all this in Minnesota, obviously. But we're gonna search for bank officers in the state of Minnesota, and we only wanna search for female bank officers, and we only wanna search for you know, the bank note signers, so we're limited to the, to the primary bankers we're interested in. So if you set the values like that, click on the search, this is the results you'd get. You can see here we've got all these female bank officers for Minnesota, and they're only the bank note signers. So that's that example. Here's Example, we're gonna look for bank officers of the last name of Davies in the states of Minnesota or South Dakota or North Dakota or Iowa. This is, this is that multiple value search I was talking about, just separating by commas. Basically any of these search boxes up here that have you know this, the S after them here, those are the ones you can put multiple values in to search like this, just separating by the comma. And now in this case, we only wanna we only want the bank officers in the national banks. So in this case, we'd uncheck the obsolete era and un uncheck state and private banks. So now it'll only search for banks in the national bank node era that are national bank type. So that's what, so then if you click on search, these are the results we get. We can see E.W. Davies was president for several banks here in Minnesota and South Dakota. And then we also got a John Davies here in Iowa. But you can see all of those have the last name of Davies one thing I didn't point out, when, it, when you do these search results, it, it'll, it'll sort them alphabetically by last name. And you can see here it switches the name, it puts the last name first, so you can, you can see how it's getting its sort there and then does that. So um, <clears throat> that's that search. Here's one we're gonna be searching for bank officers, state of Minnesota, actually the county of Faribault in Minnesota. And we only wanna search for banks that have farmers in the title and we only want to show the banknote signers. And in this case, we want it to sort by bank code rather than sorting the full list alphabetically by, by uh, bank officer last name. We want it to sort by bank code. See, so in this case, I drew this line in here and you can see how it's separating these two, two separate banks. And then within each bank, it's sorting the bank officers alphabetically. So that's an example of using this sort by. If you, if you don't want the default sort by officer name alphabetical. You can do it here and it'll search by, sort it by bank code. Now here's, in the bank titles, here's one with, with two titles. You can see it's, it's got both the titles there and it separates them by a slash. And the key thing is here, we were searching for farmers in the bank titles and it searches through every title for every bank there. And you can see here, it just found farmers in the second title there. So that's, that's why it's showing in these, in these search results. Key thing is this search will search through all titles for the banks. So, okay, so that gives you some uh, search examples there, and that kind of gives you a good, good overview with more detail than probably you wanted on the database there. 
But now let's move on to the wiki, the Banknote History Wiki. Here we are back at the Banknote History Project homepage on the SPMC site, and we can see down at the bottom here, we've got to click to the wiki. And here we're, now we're into the wiki onto the main page. Now the, the wiki website is, is a public website, so you don't have to be an SPMC member or anything. Every, anybody in the internet is going to be able to see what we've got out on, on the Banknote History Wiki here. So here's the main page. Um, you can see this looks very much like Wikipedia. And some of the navigation aids here, it automatically generates this table of contents based on the sections that are set up here. And it'll, so you can use this as a navigation aid within this page here. Um, if you wanted to go down to, you know, how you can help with this product, you could click on that and that would bring you down to that section in this page. So these, these are links, navigation aids within this page. Off to the left here, this sidebar shows on every single page in the wiki. And this provides navigation aids to other pages in the wiki. So remember, this, this is links to pages in this, to sections in this page. And these are links to other, other pages in the wiki or to other, or other locations on the internet. Um, we'll go through these, navig these, are the, these, are the na these are the links within the wiki up here. Here's some wiki tools. Um, if you're adding content here, as far as banker, bank histories and banker bios, these tools come in handy for that. We won't bother going over that right now. Here we've got some project links. In this case, here we've got a link. We can click on that and get back to the home page on the SPMC website. Or here we can click to get to an overview on the bank and bankers database. And then, of course, we've got our sponsorship link down there for SPMC. Now, another thing on the main page here, Here's, here's what we call a featured banknote. So we'll always show featured banknote on the main page and then on each state home page. Um, shows off, gives a good chance to show off some cool notes, but it also shows, it's got a link there in the caption. It's got a link to the bank officer, or to the bank history for the First National Bank. And then for each of the signing officers, it's got links to their banker bios. So in this case, if we clicked on that link there for WC Briggs, this will bring up the banker bio page for Briggs here. So you can see how that featured note, that illustrates how you, what we're doing with the wiki here. Um, once again, here we've got our contents. It shows you what other sections available for these bank, banker bios. And now let's look at these other, uh, other links over here on the sidebar. Um, main page, we, you've already saw, seen that one, we're at that one. <laughs> The project news page there, if we click on that, that'll bring up this project news page. And this page will be updated periodically with the latest news on the whole banknote history project. Topics will include new features in either, in either the wiki or the database, major data imports into the database, and then data review updates as far as what state's been finished and that sort of thing, and then any other relevant news. Um, <clears throat> so here we can see some examples here. Like on June 5th, we added the project news page and the, and the link here. So you can see this page here we just added in the last couple weeks here. But we're pointing that out on the, on the, on the, no, on the project notes here, or on the project news, so you can be aware of, be, keep up to date with what's going on. Here we've got a little blurb on full data review was finished for Rhode Island and Vermont. So it gives you an update on that data review process. Here we added a state homepage for South Dakota, so we're adding that new page to the wiki. So you can, you can see the kind of stuff that'll show on this project news page. And this, like I said, this is a good page to help you keep up to date on the, on the project. So going back to our links here, we'll go down to the next one. Now, in this case, we don't have time to look at all of them here, but I'll kind of talk you through them and then we'll look at a couple of them. The third one there is featured bank notes. I told you we had the feature bank notes that show on the main page and also on the state home pages. And what we do every couple of months probably, we'll rotate those featured bank notes in there to get new, bank, new notes and then also to highlight new banker bios and, and bank histories in the, in the wiki. But this feature bank notes page will just list the prior featured notes. So if you want to go see what notes have been featured before, you can go to that and, and see all the, all, the, all the notes that are listed there along with the links. The bank histories link here, that, um, that'll bring you to an index page to let you drill down to find bank histories that you're looking for. 
Bank histories on the wiki are sorted by state and then by town. And so that's, you can drill down from these index pages if you want. Same thing for banker biographies. The banker bios are indexed <coughs> alphabetically based on last name of the, of the banker. So once again, you can go to that index page to drill down to find the banker you want. Now there's an easier way if you're just searching for a specific banker, bank history or banker bio. On every wiki page in the upper right hand corner, there's a search box. If you wanted to find like the bank history on First National Pipestone, you can just type Pipestone up in there, click on the search thing, and that would bring up a page listing anywhere it found that word in either the title or anywhere in any of the wiki pages, and then you could click on the one that you're looking for. So a lot of times if, you're, if you know specifically what you're looking for, you can use that search rather than going, drilling down through these histories. Or you could go over to the database and search for it there and, and get the link. So you see a couple different ways to do this. But an easier way, a lot of times, if you're just searching around the wiki, use that, utilize that search page up there. Okay, then uh, oh, our, we've got other articles here that would list, like I said, other articles that aren't the banknote history related, but they can't, they don't really fit, fit into the bank histories or bank of buyers. That's what gets listed there. Now the state home pages will bring up a page with a list of all the states that currently have home pages, and then you can click on what you want there. Now in this case, I'll bypass that page. We clicked on that and we clicked on Minnesota. I just wanted to show you the bank, Minnesota banknote history, the state page here. And you can see here, this, this is what it's including. It's got, here's what's new in the wiki for Minnesota. It's got some bank histories, several bank bios. Here's another article on the yellow overby hoard that's it's new. So you can see here, if you're just interested in Minnesota, you can come to this page and, and see a lot of this stuff. Plus, we've got the featured banknote here. For this, we've got a, the king of all Minnesota obsoletes up there with <laughs> Santa Claus note and signed by J.J. Knox. They don't get any better than that. So. And you, you can see there we've got a link. There's a link there to get John J. Knox banker bio in the wiki here. So, so that's the state. That's an example of the state home pages. Now if we go back to the links here, the next one is the How You Can Help page there. I'll go over in that more detail in a couple minutes here. Uh, the random page is a fun one. If you just click on that, it'll just randomly find a page in the wiki and bring it up. So if you just wonder what's out there, just go and click on that a few times and it'll bring up random pages. Recent Changes is a uh, page, pretty detailed technical page, but it'll go through and bring up all the recent page changes in the last week or month or whatever you want to look at. So if you really want to see just what's, what's happened lately, you can, you can look into that and see exactly what changed for which pages and that sort of thing. Now as far as the help, you click on the help, it brings up the uh, help page here. There's several important things here. One is contributing content to the wiki with several pages here to help out on, on how to edit a page or add a new page and that sort of thing. Now, this um, presentation, when I originally did it, I had a section in there on just an overview of how to add content to the wiki and that sort of thing. But the whole thing just got too long and I had to start cutting stuff out. So I, that's one piece I cut out as far as how to be actually adding the content to the wiki. Um, but since I've gotten here, I've been asked by several people, you know, how, how do we actually add content to the wiki and that sort of thing. So what we'll do today, um, after we're done with this first presentation, gone through questions and that sort of thing, any of you guys that are really gluttons for punishment and want to stick around, I've got a, about a 15 minute, that section that I pulled out, we can go through that and that goes through more information on how to actually edit a wiki page and add a bank history and, and, and that sort of thing. So if you want to stick around for that, you're welcome to. We'll, we'll go ahead and do this, do question and answer, then take a short break and then come back and, and do that. So Now one section I do want to go over here is the watch list email notifications. And to help you keep up to date, the wiki can automatically send you an email whenever a page you are watching has been changed. To take advantage of this, you need to have a login account set up on the wiki to track the pages on your watch list and then obviously also have the email address available that it uses to, uh, to notify you. Um, also, in order to edit pages, or add new pages, you need to have this, this login account set up. So 
Now, some examples here, that project new, news page would be a great one to add to your watch list. So then anytime we add something new to that project new, news page with a new feature, you know, or an update on the data wiki or on the data review process or whatever, that would send you an email notification. So you don't have to be coming back, you know, checking wiki periodically to see what's going on. You can add that page to your watch list and then as soon as there's any changes to that page, it'll email you a notification and then you can come take a look at it and see what's going on. The state home pages would be another good use. If you're on primary instead in, you know, just a certain state, you could put that page on your watch list and then when anything gets changed on that page, like, you know, if we updated what's new on that state, it would send you an email notifying that there's, that there's been a change to that page and you can come and take a look at that. So you see how this watch list can be a very useful, very useful uh, feature here. Now, as far as how to watch or not watch a page, when you're logged into the wiki and viewing a page, there will be a star up next to the view history tab up there. And if it's blue, that means you're watching the, the, the page. And if it's white, it means you're, you're not. And then you can easily just click on, the, on that star to switch it back and forth as far as, as far as watching it. So that, there's a couple other ways you can watch too, but that's the easiest way to, to put a page on your watch list. All right, now we're finally the summary and wrap up here. The Banknote pro History Projects is a long-term project. We'll be working on this for years. The overall goal is to provide a good online framework to organize all this historical data and make it easily available, and then also make, easy for user, make it easy for users to add more banknote history over time. We looked at the two components, and how you can utilize those resources to research, research the history behind your banknotes. Wrap it up, I want to show you how you can help us out, continue to improve the project. To help you understand how you, how you can help, let's, we need to look at three specific data goals. The first is getting basic banker info entered into the database for as many bankers as possible. And that would include the full name and instead of those pesky initials. And then also birth and death dates if we can, if we can find them. If we've got that basic information, then that makes it a whole lot easier to tie together multi-bank bankers, like in different parts of the state, if you got an A.B. Johnson in two parts of the state, are they the same person or not? If we can get a fuller name and get like a birth and death date, then you can see, oh yeah, this is the same guy. So it helps us tie those multi-bank bankers together. And then also it gives you a great starting point for if you want to do further biographical research on those bankers, if you've got a fuller name and those birth and death dates, you can go to Ancestry or some other source and it'll it saves you a whole lot of searching around there if you've got some of this basic banker info. So that's what we want to do for as many bankers as we can. The other, let's stand right here. The other is identify other national banknote signers not in the database, including these VPs and assistant, assistant cashiers, as well as presidents cashiers that are not included in the OCC reports. There are a fair number of examples, especially at, at the start of a bank. You know, the bankers, there might have been a couple bankers, you know, president cashier that founded the bank and then a couple months later sold off the bank. So by the time the OCC report came out, they weren't listed on there, but they were signing those serial number one notes. So you get, you get those serial number one notes and look at them and they're not even listed on there. That, a lot of times is what'll happen. So we're, we're trying to identify those national note signers that are not in the database so we can get them in there. In this case, we just wanna be starting with the national bank note signers to start with that aren't on there. Cause obviously with the obsolete note signers, there's gonna be a, be a ton of them. So let's. To start with, let's just find these national banknote centers that aren't in there, and then we'll get on to the op states later. The third one is obviously adding more bank histories and banker bios to the wiki. And then in this case, adding them for both national and obsolete banks and bankers. There's no reason not to be getting these bank histories in and banker bios for the obsolete banks. So no reason to hold up on that, even if the database isn't quite caught up yet. So, And then the key thing is anything in the wiki can be linked into the Bank and Bankers database and then the, uh, the Obsolete's database project as well as other online resources. Um, an example of another online resource that you can use for this, I'm, I'm on the paper money forum, probably a lot of you are on that paper money forum. And periodically I'll post a scan of a note if it's relevant to a, a thread they've got going. And if, if I know that there's bank histories or banker bios in the wiki on that, you know, I'll just put a, in the caption underneath that scan, I'll put links in there. So if somebody's looking at that post, they can see the note. And if they're interested in more information, they can click on the links and it'll bring them over into the wiki to, to see the bank histories and, and banker bios. So you can see how this wiki information is not just, 
you know, the Bank and Bankers database and the ODP, there's, uh, you know, any place else you potentially can link back into this information, so. All right, so now given those three data goals, if you've got data to share, you could email a spreadsheet to admin at banknotehistory.com. And uh, first of all, if it's basic banker informo inf information, include these five columns, the National Bank Charter number, or the Haxby number if it's an obsolete bank, full banker name, however much have you got, uh, the birth date, death date, spouse name if available, and the, if you've only got partial birth dates, just a month and a year, or even if it's just a year, that's great. Any, anything we can get there to help us you know, get some more information on these bankers. So that's basically the uh, basic banker info we're looking for. For the other national bank note signers not in the database, include the charter number, banker name, Signature source, indicate where we can view a note with that SIG so we can snip off the signature scan, like if it's Heritage or NBN Census. Um, or if you, if you want to just attach a scan of the signature or the note, and then we can, we can just snip off, you know, we can do a, a, a window, you have got a neat tool where you can just circle part of your screen and it'll just take that and turn it into a JPEG. So we can just circle the signature and get that signature scan into the database. And of course, if you've got basic banker info for those guys too, you know, include it, the more the merrier. And then, of course, adding the bank histories and banker bios to the wiki. And like I said, you need to have a login account set up on the wiki in order to edit pages or add new pages. So if you want to be adding content, um, send an email to admin at banknotehistory.com and just ask us to set up a login account on the wiki and send your full name and email address. And then we'll get your account set up. And then it'll do the usual send back a link where you can click on that and It'll bring you over, you can set up your password, you know, a verification thing to set up your password, and then you can go ahead and log in and start editing away and adding pages to your, to your watch list and that sort of thing. So you know, all, this, all this information here, remember that how you can help link up in the sidebar? This is all listed there. So if you're interested in seeing what's needed, you can just go to that link. So all right, well, that's, that's the end of this part of the presentation here. Um, any questions? Wait, Wendell. Do you anticipate going down the slippery slope to exchange bankers that aren't listed in Haxby? And uh, is that something you want to add at this point, or is that something? Not, not, not at this point. Down the road, maybe. <laughs> let's, let's worry about the nationals to start with. And, and on the obsoletes, if we can stick the, to, the, to the Haxby, to the actual banks that are listed there, um, that'd be easier. At least we've got that consistent code. To get to them, and at some point, obviously, like I said, this is long-term projects. So somewhere down the road, you know, we'll, we can expand it into that. But we let's try to keep it simple to to start with. So the main the main thing about this whole project is setting up a framework to let us get this information in there. Now over the, over the years, we can be adding this information in. So okay, anybody? You set, I guess you set up the wiki page, right? I set up the wiki website. Yeah. I said, yeah, but, but you guys can be adding the actual pages and we've got templates and that's what we'll go over in this next thing as far as how to do that. So, Bob? Mark, uh, I noticed the line in there about bank histories and it hit me in my personal library at home, I've probably got over a hundred uh, bank histories that were published by banks on say 50th or 75th or 100 mm -hmm. year anniversaries or whatever, which obviously contain a wealth of information. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking for say people like me to go through the effort of scanning those histories and then emailing to you? I'm sure most of them were privately published so there's no copyright issues or anything. I don't know that you need to go to the trouble of scanning them. Um, just going through those and getting the basic bank history info on them? Because yeah. when, when it said bank histories, it hit me. I said, gee, I've got some of which range from like a 12 page pamphlet mm -hmm. to a 100 page hardcover book. And um, that's why I was asking you about those yesterday and, and kind of cringe when you said, oh, I'm just throwing those at the raffle. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that is something different. But I'm just New York. I've got over okay. 100 different banks. So. And that's a that's a great source for information on this stuff, yeah. And, and it, rather than scanning it all and sending it in, um, I mean the, the best thing 
you know, if you have the time, just going through those and getting this basic banker inf bank information, and more importantly, a lot of those will list the bankers too, and you might oh, get you, you might get full you might get these full names and you know some basic bio and for like birth. And that's the thing. If we can just get some of that information out of those and submit that on spreadsheets, then we can just get it loaded in, and that'd be a great source for that sort of information. So, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Why don't we go ahead and take maybe a short five-minute break, and then any anybody that's interested in going through some of the details of how to add banker bios and bank histories to the wiki. We'll go through that. That'll be about a 15 minute session or so, so it won't be uh, as hardcore as what we went through here. So. Okay, I'm Mark Drinkson. This is the second part of our presentation. Here we'll go over a little more detail on how to actually add bank histories and banker bios to the wiki. So let's get rolling on this. Um, <clears throat> here's the help contents page that we had. And here's where I point out we're going to be coming to the, going through some of this stuff. First, we'll take a quick look at the basic user guide to the MediaWiki markup language. That's, that's the markup language, that's the software this whole wiki is based on. And this is the same markup language used for Wikipedia. And uh, let's see. Basically, markup characters in the text control how the text and images are displayed. Um, Let's see, we'll go through and let's look at some text formatting markup options here. Now in this case, if in the raw text, if you typed in the word italic or any words and you put a quote or you know just two apostrophes on either side, when it actually displays that on the wiki page, it's going to show that text in italics. So that's the markup if you want to show italics. If you want to show bold, you just put three apostrophes on either side, and then it'll show whatever text you have between the apostrophes as bold. And if you want to do both and both bold and italic, then you use five of them. So that you just do that, and this is what you're putting in the raw text, and then this is what displays. Now we won't go over through the rest of them there, but another one that's used a lot of times is the uh, the bullet points, and the markup for that is just showing an asterisk. So in the raw text, if you have an asterisk, it's going to show a bullet point. If you have two asterisks, it's going to show a second level bullet. And three shows a three, third level. So you can see how, these, how this text is actually displayed. So that's just some real basic text formatting. Um, now section headings. These are standard uh, section headings. You just put two. Like in this case, a level two section heading, you put two equal signs on either side of whatever text you want. And that'll get treated as a level two heading, and it will display like that, along with the line. So that's the level two headings are the major sections that'll separate things with this line. But this is how you'd have it in the actual text. And the key thing is, with these section headings, that's what it uses to automatically create that table of contents that shows on every wiki page. In this case, you can see our level two heading here for the section headings. And here we've got level three headings, and those get indented further. So this is just, no, here's a level three, and you can see how that, that shows up in the, uh, in the contents there. So you'll, you'll see how, you'll see these throughout the uh, text, and you'll use these to separate the text that you actually have on the page. And that main thing is these section control, how the table of contents is automatically generated for that page. Now, as far as links, there's two types of links in the wiki. An internal link points to another page in the same wiki, and that's enclosed in double square brackets, and then it uses a pipe character in between the page title and then what text you want to be displayed on the link. So that's an internal link. An external link points to a page somewhere else on the internet, on, on a different website. And an external link has only got a single square bracket. And in that case, you've got the URL, and then a space separates the URL and the display text that you want. Um, now let's go into how to edit a wiki page. Now you've got just the real basic markup language. Let's go through editing a wiki page. Here's a real simple wiki page. It's just an index page on Banker bios, and we've only got two bankers lists there. So that's, that's the simple page. 
Now, in order to edit this page, you have to log into the wiki. You have to have this account and log into the wiki. So there's there's a login link in the upper right hand corner. Just click on that and log in under your account that we've assigned you for the wiki. This is separate from the SPMC login log account. This is just a login account on this wiki. But once you get logged in, you can see it shows some more information across the top. It'll show you when you're logged in. Now here, remember, I talked about that star for the watching a page. Here's that page, here's that star here. So in this case, we're not watching this page since it's white. If you just click on that when you're in edit mode, which we are now, it would switch to blue and that means that page is gonna be on your watch list. Anytime that page is changed, you're gonna get an email notification on it, so. Now in this case, we're gonna to wanna to click on, there's the star, we're gonna to wanna to click on the edit tab there in order to edit this page. So once we edit it, it'll bring up the text in what, what's called an edit box here. And now you can see, here's that, you can see these markup characters in there. Um, I'll illustrate this better in a second here. Normally when you're editing, here's where you actually do the editing. In the edit box, you'd be changing and adding stuff here. A key way you do the editing is just periodically, you might wanna see what I've done for, what I've done so far, how that looks. So if you just click on that show preview down there, that will show a preview above the edit box. It'll show the preview. See, since we've got a nice short page, you can see both of them here. Normally you might have a longer page and it's gonna be hard to see, but that's why I use this short page. So now this is, this is the raw text that is generating this, generating this page. And then normally when you're doing these edit process, you're gonna do some editing, do a preview to see how it looks like, see if it's right, see something wrong, then you go back to editing and do it that sort of thing. And then once you've got it looking how you want, then you go and you click on the save changes. So now in this case, you can see how the, the markup works here. We've got the, the asterisk in the, in the raw text corresponds to the bullets in the, in the, on the actual wiki page. Here we've got Davy showing bold because it's got the three apostrophes around it. Here we've got Hypestone Minnesota in italics since it's got the two apostrophes on either side. And here we've got an internal link. See, it's got both of these lines are internal links. They've got two brackets around them. And that pipe character in the middle, remember that separates the, the caption or the text that'll show. And in this case, we can see here the text that shows. It shows Driscoll in bold because it's got the three apostrophes on either side, then Robert Henry, and then Lead South Cody in, in parentheses. So you can see what's to the right of this pipe character is what shows. And then the actual link it'll go to, if you link on it, is what shows on the left side of that pipe. So if you click on that link up there, it's gonna to go to the page that has this title. Well, one thing on the page titles, these are, it's Unix based, so these are um, case sensitive page titles. So, so be careful when you're putting these links in. It's gotta match case and that sort of thing, so. Okay, so now in this case, we made a change and we, or one quick thing, here, the, um, the markup characters in here, they've got a little edit toolbar here that if you forget what you, know, what you need for bold, you can click on this bold look here and it'll put an example down where you had, the, where you had your cursor. It puts some text and it put three apostrophes on either side. So it's kind of, it's an easy way to remember. If you can't remember what markup characters to be using, you can use this. We got for bold, italic, this is a, a, a link this is, an, this is an internal link, this, the world, you can see that's an external link, and then what font you want and that sort of thing. So that, that toolbox can come in handy sometime if you're forgetting some of the markup syntax. Now in this case, the change we're making on this page is to add this new link here for Robert Edward Driscoll. So you either type that in, or in this case, we just cut and paste this one and changed, it was an easy way to do it. But this is the new line we've added, and if we do a preview, now we can see that line shows up in our page. The reason it shows in red there, um, if a link shows in blue, that means it's a valid link and the page is available. If it shows in red, that means that page does not exist in the wiki. See, in this case, we are just adding a new one. There isn't a page there yet. We are just adding the link to it. So that's why it's showing in red. Now here's another way you can watch the page. If you're doing an edit and you decide this is the page you wanna be watching, you can just click on that down there before you save it, and then that's the same as 
is, is working with the, with the star up there. Now this is an important thing here. If, you, if you're looking at the weekend, and you're reading a page and you find a typo and you, you're able to edit, you can just go in and quick change that, you know, fix the typo and that sort of thing. Now in that case, you wouldn't want to bother who's ever watching that page with that little change. So if you flag this as a minor edit, then the watch list notification will not go out on that change. So it won't bother everybody if you're just fixing a typo on one, one word or something. So that's, that's what that checkbox is for down there. So now in this case, we made our change, we previewed it, it looks fine. Now you do the save changes, and it'll save the changes and then display the page. So that's, that basically shows how you can edit a page. Um, I'm gonna go through real quick, <coughs> I'm gonna go through real quick how to um, undo that change. The nice thing about a wiki is it's keeping versioning in there, so if you make, if you screw up a page or something, we can easily just go back and get it prior. So don't be worrying about anything you're doing in the, in the wiki, it's, you're not gonna be able to break it, so. But if, we, if we're in there and we click on the view history, it'll bring up a detailed list of the changes that have been made, made to that page. And in this case, here it shows the last two revisions. If we, that's the default. If we click on that, it's gonna show exactly what change was made. So in here it shows that new line that we inserted. It's showing that page, or showing the change there. Now you see that little undo up there? If we click on that, it's gonna undo this change. So here, let's do that, and it brings it up, and it deleted that entry, and it's showing what it, what it changed here. And then we, if we wanna go and save it, save it after that, now this gets, basically we undid the change. So you can see it's easy to undo the change there. Um, now, let's I'll quick show you how to actually add a new banker bio. Um, the key thing with the banker bio and the bank history is we've got template pages set up with the, with, with the, with the, um, with the sample section headings here for what you normally want to put in. Obviously, you can change this and do whatever you want, but this is a good template here you can use to, uh, to get a banker bio in there with, with the sections that we could normally list, plus the standard other text that we want to be using, plus these images. See, we can set up images there and then all you have to do is change change the file name rather than having to worry about the syntax for all these different types of, of images. So you can see here's the contents and a couple of different images and the, the main thing is it's setting up this template. Okay, now that, what would happen here, here's in the help page there is the, the link on how to add a new banker buyer. That would bring up this page. Read through these instructions and that, so you got an idea of what you're doing. But the, basically what you want to do Get the name, this is gonna be the page title. Get that in the proper format. I'm sorry. What you can do here before, before you actually create the new page, to save a little time, if you've got images, you can upload those ahead of time. They have to be uploaded, and then, then all I have to do is change the, the file name in the, uh, in the template there, and then that'll have those available. So usually it's easier just, you can wait till later to do it, but it's easier just to upload any images to start with and then come to this page and actually, there's, there's the link over there to upload the files. The sidebar. There we go, all right. This gives you the, the format for the title for the page. And then what you do, you just type in page. Here we're gonna do, remember that page we we're making the change? It was for a, for a banker bio for Robert Edward Driscoll. So we just type in what the page title will be there, click on the create new banker page over there. That will create a, bring up the edit box with the template inserted in there. And then it's just a matter of, you can go through like in that case, just for that image that showed over there, just change it to your file name to show the, the picture of the banker over there. You just change that right there. Don't worry about the rest of this stuff. And then the, you can change the the, the caption of the thing, just change that right there. Then you can just change this introductory paragraph to whatever you want. And then in this case, you can see the sections here. Here's where you just kind of copy and paste the text that you've got that's relevant in right after the section heading, you know, you split them up in between these section headings. So you're just kind of copying and pasting in the text that you've already pulled together previously for history on this, on this banker bio. And then it's the same process as editing a page. You can go through the preview, you know, preview what it looks like, make more changes, and then when you finally got it how you want it, go ahead and save it. 
Now, a lot, one recommended thing if you're adding a new banker bio, put a few of these changes in and then go ahead and save it. So you've got the actual page created and saved, and then after that, you can bring it up and just edit it. Rather than working for an hour on this and your connection goes down, you lose everything. Just get that save page in there pretty quick and then come back and edit it. And just that sort of process will save you some grief once in a while. So, Okay, so that's, that's basically the, uh, that gets us through the section of how to edit a wiki page and also add a banker bio. And then this is just back to that, how you can help, help page. So that's, right. that's pretty much it.